Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today our focus is on hip external rotation. We'll explore its mechanics, examine the key muscles involved, and discuss its range of motion. For a refresher on hip joint mechanics, check out the previous video on hip flexion. Let's dive into what hip external rotation is. This movement simply involves turning the thigh outward, away from the body's midline. It is crucial for activities like walking, squatting, and balancing. Let's check out the primary movers. First up, we have the gluteus maximus. This muscle is the largest and one of the most powerful in the whole body. It originates from the ilium, the sacrum, and the coccyx, and inserts into the iliotibial tract and the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. Its posterior fibers are highly active during external rotation, especially when the hip is extended. The gluteus maximus generates the bulk of force needed for powerful movements like sprinting and jumping and also stabilizes the hip joint. Moving on, let's talk about the piriformis. This muscle starts at the anterior surface of the sacrum and inserts into the greater trochanter of the femur. Its deep posterior fibers are crucial for external rotation, particularly when the hip is extended. Besides aiding in rotation, the piriformis helps to stabilize the hip joint and ensures proper alignment throughout the movement. Let's move on to the obturator internus and gemellus muscles, which both originate in the pelvis and work in unison to assist in external rotation. The obturator internus originates from the inner surface of the obturator membrane and the surrounding bones, inserting into the greater trochanter of the femur. Its primary role is to stabilize the hip joint and assist in the outward rotation of the thigh, especially when the hip is flexed. Now that we have covered the primary movers, let's move on to the secondary movers. The sartorius begins at the anterior superior iliac spine, the ASIS, and inserts into the medial aspect of the tibia. While its main function are hip and knee flexion, the sartorius also aids in external rotation, especially when the hip is flexed. Its fibers assist in refining the rotation during the later phase of the movement, aiding additional support. Following the sartorius, let's discuss the tensor fasciae latae, the TFL. This muscle originates from the iliac crest and extends into the iliotibial band. The TFL helps with external rotation through its fibers that stabilize the pelvis and control the rotation of the thigh. Its role is particularly important when the hip is in a neutral or a slightly flexed position, contributing to controlled rotation and maintain balance. As we wrap up, let's also briefly touch on the factors influencing the range of motion. You could say that the average range is about up to 60 degrees, depending on your own individual flexibility, strength, and anatomical differences. Just like last time, I showed you this example on the table, and again, I want to make you aware that even though the thigh goes inward this time, the head of the femur still goes in external rotation. Let's address another thing from my last video. I asked you guys who actually trains internal rotation and realized I was only thinking in terms of increasing range of motion and completely disregarded the rest of sports. But thanks to everyone who commented, all of you are legends, I now understand how many sports actually depend heavily on internal and external rotation. Here are three great examples from you guys that I found awesome. First, of course, martial arts, this also of course, applies to a lot of dancing and gymnastics. Internal and external rotation, for example, control where your foot is positioned in space. This is crucial for either hitting a target or striking a pose to make it look beautiful. Another example I loved is the goalie from ice hockey. Goalies often quickly need to switch between internal and external rotation to block a puck from entering the goal. And of course, stretching is another key area. After a long workout, when you sit up and relax, just let your feet fall outward into external rotation and it just feels great. Anyway, I think this is it for this video. Next time, we are going to look at the range of motion of the hip. This is going to be a very important video for myself because I think there's a lot of misunderstandings out there and I'll try to shed some light on this topic. Please remember you can add me on Instagram and also check out my awesome posters in my store. Maybe you want to put some muscle on your wall. Thank you for all your comments and kind words, and I see you in the next one. Have a good one.